Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to BTech. It's Basil here, and today I'll be reviewing the Sony Smartwatch 3. So what is a Smartwatch 3? It's an Android Wear device, the only one loaded up with a GPS. At CES, a metal strap variant of it was announced, but we've only had the silicon strapped version to test. So for now, we'll have to settle with this, but we'd hardly call it settling when you think about it. After all, the Smartwatch 3 may not have a heart rate monitor, but like we said, it has a GPS, it's got the biggest battery around, and it has a nice high resolution display. Among other things, but we're going to start off by talking about that design. The main units include a silicon strap and of course that body unit. They do all detach from each other, it's worth noting. It's thicker than the ASUS ZenWatch, our smartwatch of 2014, although that thickness does owe to something. You have a micro USB connection around the back. Yep, you heard right, no proprietary connections, a micro USB port. While it is quite clumsy in function, you kind of have to take everything apart before you can actually wedge the micro USB cable in there. It is still brilliant not having to carry a cradle with you or whatever it is to charge up your smartwatch. Take the Motorola 360, that wireless charging mechanism is a nightmare if you want to charge it on the go. This, on the other hand, will be a piece of cake. What's also good is the fact that the clasp is secure. It fits nicely on the wrist and the silicon strap, albeit silicon, doesn't tear your hair out like a lot of other cheaper straps out there. Still, it does feel cheap when compared to the ASUS ZenWatch and indeed a lot of other smartwatches. And unfortunately, you can't swap out the strap for a standard wrist strap fitting. You'll have to wait until the metal clasp version comes out or the adapter that Sony will be releasing down the line. As far as the screen goes, resolution-wise, it's one of the best out there with a 320x320 320 display. Technology-wise, however, the transflective panel is a mixed bag. It's great to see a persistent passive image on the watch, whatever you're doing. So even if the screen isn't on, you can see what the time is. But having said that, that technology also means you end up with a slightly washed out picture when the screen actually is on. This isn't a massive problem when you're viewing the watch in isolation, but then when you flick your phone on and see a beautiful screen or see it side by side against another smartwatch with a superior screen, it does just look that little bit too washed out for our liking. As for what's inside the screen, it runs Android Wear 5.0, Lollipop. This is the latest version of Google's wrist-based operating system. In terms of the UI, you've got a pull down bar, you've got cards you can swipe out of the way, and you've got access to Google Now. Google restricts the customization manufacturers can apply to Android Wear watches. However, it does allow Sony to put their own smartwatches on and compatibility with a bunch of their applications like LifeLog. The operating system on the whole is quite limited when compared to Tizen, for example. It doesn't have such strong standalone app support, and there are a few other areas that Tizen has just leapt ahead, but Tizen's been going a lot longer. Google now definitely works well and the GPS on board means you can use it independently of your smartphone if you're going running. What's also great for runners out there is the fact the 4 gig of onboard memory can be used for your music so if you have a Google Play subscription or you store your music on Google Play you can transfer your music across relatively easily though be patient it transfers via Bluetooth so can take a while. As far as the Sony watch faces go they're nice enough but a watch face probably isn't going to dictate whether or not you buy this over another Android Wear device. One area that probably will is a battery life, and that's the Sony Smartwatch 3's strongest suit. With a 420 milliamp cell, it easily lasts for two days. If you do use the GPS heavily, then you might want to cut that down to one day, but still, that's better than a lot of other smartwatches out there. Speaking of that GPS, all your connections on board really are typical. Sure, there's no heart rate monitor, so anyone who really, really needs a heart rate monitor on their smartwatch, look elsewhere. That GPS is a nice advantage. You've got Bluetooth 4.0 on here as well. Nothing really else to note. No infrared blasters like on the Samsung Gear 2 Neo, for example, and no cellular radio like on the Samsung Gear S. Still, as far as Android Wear watches go, we find the smartwatch 3 quite compelling. With its battery life, it's little wonder that it's one of your favorites, and by your, we mean our commenters, because it's the smartwatch you guys have been talking about the most. It's the only Android Wear device that will comfortably last for two days, so that's pretty massive. You can't deny the fact though, the screen does let it down, especially when held side by side with other smartwatches. The lack of heart rate monitor might also be irritating for some people, even if it didn't bother us so much. But like we said, you do get that GPS in there. 
In isolation, the Sony Smartwatch 3 may not be perfect, but it's still a good smartwatch. If you need a smart smartwatch that looks a business, it may not fit the bill. But if you need your smartwatch to last for two full days without fail, then it's the only Android Wear option out there.